On behalf of the TTN Chicago chapter, uh, we are very happy to present Sandy Weiner, who is a dating relationship and love coach. She has uh, she has been a TEDx speaker, uh, helping women 50 plus uh, in um, finding relationships, long-term relationships and love. Um, and uh, she has a, a host of a, a podcast uh, and also a radio show um, and a book and lots of other great things and is an expert on this topic. So we're really happy to have Sandy here with us tonight. And uh, so looking forward to what she has to share with us on dating online during the pandemic. So, and beyond, right, Sandy? <laughs> we need a beyond. Uh, right. So with that, yeah. So with that, I'll turn it over to you, Sandy. Thank you so much for having me, for hosting me. I am really excited about being here tonight. I love the Transition Network. I spoke for, to the New York branch a few years ago. It was one of my favorite audiences. So are you ready to learn about how to find love online during the pandemic and beyond? Yes. So you can use reactions. You can write in the chat area. I'm going to um, invite you to to please give this class your full attention and shut down distractions. This is your time. And so also to grab a pen and paper or something to write with because you're probably gonna to wanna to take notes. So here we go. First, a little bit about me. I'm the founder of a company called Last First Date. I've been a dating and relationship coach for women over 40, over 50. Most, most of my clients are 50, 60 and beyond. I've been doing this for 13 years. I got divorced after a 23 year marriage. I wanted to find out why I had attracted the wrong person into my life. And as I was also divorcing, I was going to coaching school because I loved working with people my entire life. And I ended up specializing in this because I was working with, a, talking to a friend of mine every single day who was dating way before I was ready. And she was just clueless about men, about dating. Her profile was terrible. Her pictures were awful online. And one day she said to me, Sandy, you're a man whisperer. You understand men. <laughs> and I said, oh, I, I guess I do. And I ended up specializing in this. I love this work. I have helped so many women overcome their fears. I have helped them learn to communicate better, communicate with confidence. It's one of the biggest issues in dating. I help women break toxic patterns that have kept them from the relationships they want. And so I offer group coaching, private coaching, retreats, and I've got my book, Becoming a Woman of Value. And I'm also host of a popular podcast, Last First Date Radio, we have over 450 episodes and I get to interview the most amazing people. So I love my work and I'm excited to be here. Last March, when the world shut down, I was getting a lot of questions from women about what to do about dating during these challenging times. Should I shut down my profile? Should I take a break from dating? Should I, well, I don't know what to do. So I ended up creating a comprehensive four week course about how to date online during the pandemic. And I thought I would teach it once and the pandemic would be over, <laughs> maybe in April, right? We thought two weeks lockdown. Well, here we are a year later and we are still not sure what's gonna be happening. I am going to be sharing some of the highlights of that course with you tonight. So what I would love for you to do right now is to write in the chat area, if you took a break during the pandemic, or if you continue to date, or maybe you weren't dating at all before or during the pandemic. So just to get a feel for where you are and who I'm talking to here, what did you do about dating during the pandemic? I see Chris took a break, Tracy took a break, Megan took took a break from dating. We're getting lots of breaks. Took a break, Ellen. Broke up with someone after six years. Wow, took a break. Marianne, haven't dated yet. Got another break. All right, so yeah, things are starting to change. And that break, as I said, has turned into a year. The break that we thought was gonna be a month or two weeks. 
And while many states and countries are starting to slowly open up again, here in Connecticut where I live, we're getting bigger indoor gatherings and I'm actually quite nervous about what's happening because we have new cases of COVID. I got one vaccine, Kimberly just told me she got one vaccine. So some of us are, are starting to feel a little bit better, but there is no normal, right? We're not going to get back to normal anytime soon. So I think this is a great time to learn about how to create connection and intimacy in a whole new way. And I believe that every challenge creates new opportunities. We have a choice about how we process every challenge that we get. And the pandemic is no different. It has brought us so many innovative ways to create connection and to create a better way to date, actually. Dating apps and sites have seen a spike during the pandemic because singles are craving connection because many of us have been physically isolated for a long time. We are a social species and connection is more important now than ever. So whether you're taking a break or you are dating currently, or you're currently in a, you know, looking online or you're in a relationship, you're in the right place. And be sure to stay on till the end because I'm gonna be taking your questions and I have a few free gifts for you. So let's begin. Why is this the perfect time to date? Well, before the pandemic, online dating had become a place of quick judgments and superficial connections that often didn't go anywhere. And if you didn't like one little thing about a person or they didn't like one little thing about you, you just move on to find someone else. If you were texting or talking and you weren't feeling it, you could disappear and never speak to them again. And what about men who were just looking for a hookup when you were looking for a serious relationship. With endless choice and terrible communication, we have lost the art of courtship. A lot of that has changed during the pandemic. With the fear of catching the virus, there are less hookups. And we're back to kind of a Victorian way of courtship where we have the opportunity to get to know men without the pressures of when to have sex, who pays on a first date because you're meeting virtually, or any of the other challenges we used to have before the pandemic. So if you're looking for a meaningful connection and an intimate relationship, I believe it's the perfect time to date. The first thing we have to do is dump your old dating rules. Things have changed. Now more than ever, it's time to ditch the old dating rules. Before coronavirus and physical isolation, this is how most of us dated online. Most women waited for men to initiate everything. First message, first call, first date. And then if we were lucky enough to hear from a few men, we would text back and forth a few times, maybe back and forth more than a few times. And if there was interest, we would meet as soon as possible so that we would see if it was a connection. And there was this unspoken rule in dating. Face-to-face -face is the best way to get a real sense of if there's chemistry and connection, right? And then there were other rules. There was the three date rule. I don't know how many of you heard about the three date rule, but you know, three dates, have sex or somebody might leave you. We had all these crazy rules and I am not a fan of rules. I am a fan of principles. We have dating principles, like how to be as a human being, but not these rules that were created to make people feel like they could understand and make sense of this crazy world of dating that we live in today. During the pandemic, it's more challenging to meet in person. Everyone has their own boundaries around who they'll see and whether it's indoors or outdoors. So much has changed, which is why we have to dump the old dating rules and pivot to what I call the new normal. So here's what works during the pandemic. I believe women should initiate contact with men. They should always send first messages um, with or without a pandemic, by the way, you'll get much, much higher level of success text a few times, and then get onto a short phone call and see if there's a connection. Keep that call to no more than 20 minutes to a half hour. And if you're both interested in taking it to the next level, it's time for a virtual date. 
And I will get into some of the do's and don'ts about virtual dating in just a minute. But first, I want to just ask you to please never get into long text conversations with men. When they don't ask you to call and you don't wanna be a pen pal or build a false sense of intimacy with somebody you have never spoken to, you still need to see each other as soon as you can to see if there's chemi chemistry and true connection. But since we can't meet in person, we have, to, we have to get on a call and let a man know, hey, it's been great talking to you. I would love to hear your voice. If he's not interested or he goes, great, and then he continues to text you, wish him well and move on. We got no time to wait. Waste. <laughs> um, so think of dating today also kind of like long distance dating. I, I worked in summer camps for, for a few summers uh, after my divorce and I was dating online at the time and I was living in my camp. It was like four hours away from my house, but I was long distance Skype dating. Skype, there was no Zoom at the time with men who lived in my area that I was going to meet in like a month or maybe even two months. And we would get on some Skype dates. And I remember some of those dates were so cute where guys would come with like a glass of wine. And, and this is like what's happening today, but I really got to know men before I could actually meet them. And since today it's like long distance dating because you don't know when you're gonna be able to meet, you can also dump another rule you might have about dating men who live close by. A lot of people have this very narrow geographic area, like 10 miles away. I believe in opening up your preferences as wide as you can about the things that don't matter the most and closing them really tight on the things that do. I had a client who ended up with a guy who was about 45 minutes away this guy dated her for about a year and broke up with her over the phone and said, he found somebody who lived around the corner. It was more convenient for him. It was devastating for her, but the next guy she met lived three hours away and he ended up going so far out of, the, out of his way to date her. The first date he drove to her, he stayed in a hotel he ended up, they, they ended up getting married. They, they're an amazing couple. And he moved and he was in his seventies when they got remarried. He moved to her town, to her house. He's a psychiatrist. He got recertified in her state. I mean, this was an incredible, an incredible sacrifice that he was willing to make because he was so in love with her as opposed to the guy who dumped her for the, for the neighbor because she was more convenient. So this is just a cautionary tale that sometimes the best matches can be far away. They don't live in your backyard. And if finding love isn't to you, I encourage you to open up those preferences. So challenge yourself to be open to men who are maybe shorter than you would date, um, live farther away. And remember, men can travel just as much as you can travel, right? So. A lot of women say, but I don't have the time to travel or I don't wanna be the, to the one doing the traveling. And so what I wanna encourage you to, to think about is you can meet halfway. Once you're in a relationship, you can choose you know, whose home you're going to go to for the weekend until you decide to go to the next level. So these things can be negotiated with the right people. So challenge yourself to be more open about those things, but really, really closed about the non-negotiables. And by non-negotiables, I'm talking about character traits. I'm talking about the things that you absolutely must have in a partner or you would not be able to get along with them. I tell clients to narrow it down to five things and I'm not gonna go into how I do that now because I don't have time, but it is one of the most important things to know the deal breakers and the must haves, because once you have that list, you don't get swayed by charm and good looks and degrees. You know, we often want somebody who has a high degree of education, but they're not really a good partner. 
And, you know, having a doctorate doesn't make you a good person. It doesn't make you have good relationship skills. So these are the important things that we have to narrow it down to. And then you just like post it on your, on your bathroom mirror and never deviate from that list. So for anybody who wants more information on that, we can talk about that at the end and you can schedule a session with me. The pandemic has really helped a lot of us realize what's really important, right? We, we've had so many things taken away that we've been focused on what really is important to us. And that's why we can update our profiles with a little bit about who we've become, what we've narrowed down our interests to be. And also if a lot of times we write profiles that are dated, like maybe we're talking about travel a lot and we haven't been able to travel. So if you talk about where you are doing or what you have done to stay sane during these times, maybe talk about a show you're binging on Netflix or Hulu or Amazon Prime or a book you're reading. I mean, I've read so many books over the pandemic and definitely binged on a lot of shows. There, there was a lot trending for a while about things like, um, what was that guy, The Tiger King and all these crazy shows. It's like, they're terrible, but you can't stop watching them. So it's, they could be great conversation starters. Uh, people have been cooking more. So if you've been cooking or baking bread, you can write about something you're, you're cooking to stay healthy or maybe something decadent that you're baking. And who cares if you eat 20 more cookies? I don't. So if you haven't updated your profile in a long time or you've never written one, it can be daunting. And most people don't get this part right either. We just write a bunch of things that are not really attractive to the people we're interested in. So I'm going to give you a few tips. Again, this is all like a little about a lot of things, but um, here are a few super tips about how to write a successful profile. The first thing is to stay away from a list of adjectives. Most people say things like, I'm funny, I'm adventurous, I'm creative, and we don't really learn much about you through those words. If I say, I'm creative, it could mean many things, right? I would love to hear from you in the chat area. What does creative bring to mind to you? Artist, art major, thinking outside the box. See, that's very different. Innovative, uh, it, it can mean so many things. Uh, creative problem solving, uh, taking art classes. So you can see like somebody reading your profile and you say, I'm creative and you meant I'm a creative problem solver and somebody else read it as, oh, she must be artistic. We don't know that. What's important is to be specific. And so an example would be, I'm a watercolor artist and I love painting flowers because nature is breathtaking to me. Very different from I'm creative, right? We get a full sense of who you are, but also the word because. Because is a magic word. It helps people learn about your why, your values. I love painting it because nature is breathtaking to me. I love being a teacher because I get to make a difference in children's lives. Very different from saying, I'm a teacher, I'm a lawyer. That's how most people talk and it's boring and we know nothing about you. And so this is something you can use on dates and on phone calls, that magic word because and getting more specific. So a, a successful profile includes a little about yourself, a little about your ideal match, and a short description of what you would like to do ideally together. Be bold, be funny, be interesting, and end with a call to action. And if you struggle with writing about yourself, it's one of the services I provide. So if you're interested, we can talk after. I have a short profile that I'm gonna share that I wrote for a client during the pandemic. Holding hands is magical. I can't wait to be able to do that again. When it's cold out, I love to be out with a partner in the silent sunlit snowy woods with a thermos of hot chicken soup, a warm fire, and a shoulder to lean on. In warmer seasons, I enjoy walking together along the Long Island Sound, breathing in the salty sea air. I like to read books about different cultures, like The Henna Artist, written with heart and wisdom. What's on your nightstand? I've traveled to some extraordinary places where I loved expanding my mind by learning about different cultures. Looking forward to traveling to Paris again to hug and kiss my three grandchildren. 
We'll probably get along if you're creative in some way, enjoy meaningful conversations, have a growth mindset, and we'll be up for cooking healthy meals together. I can't wait to do all of that with someone special. If that sounds like you, please say hi. I would love to hear your takeaways. What did you notice about the profile that is different from what you normally see in other profiles? And let me know in the chat area. It's more like a story. Felt like I was getting to know her, what she loved and who she was. Was not braggy, but descriptive and inclusive. And if you notice, there's a call to action at the end. Most people leave that out. And yeah, Paula said call to action. And right, so men are very linear. They will not respond to your messages or your, or your profile if you don't give them an in and a way to do it. And so we're making it easier to connect. Most women, and this is an interesting thing, most women are writing profiles that their best friends would love, but that men don't connect to at all. And most men write profiles that their friends would be interested in, but women don't connect at all. Like we really don't get each other. And if you look at pictures, it's the same thing. You look at men's photos of motorcycles and hunting and um, all the tattoos and the bathroom selfies and the muscles. And they're, they're showing off in a way that men love. Like other men would be, wow, you're such a cool dude women are often not interested in the same things. And so when we have an, an insight into how men think and what men want and what they're looking for, if a man can picture himself in your profile and in your pictures, you've got a much higher chance of finding love than most people who are dating online. So it's not because you're not good enough or you're not pretty enough or you're not anything or interesting enough it's that you may not be writing or presenting yourself in a way that's appealing to your ideal match. And so this is to give you an upper, an, the upper hand. All right, we are gonna talk about photos. And um, these are just some random photos that I found that kind of depict what people are looking for online. A lot of people hate taking photos. They have photos of everybody but themselves in their, you know, in their phone. But here's the thing. Um, you've got to update your photos. Photos are the first point of contact and men are visual, but we are visual too. Like we can all say, oh, men are just interested in their all surface. And the truth is, we all, if we met people out in real life, we would also be first looking at the surface of who they are, how they present themselves. I'm not saying you have to look a certain way. I'm saying you have to update your photos in order to be current and not have somebody say, oh my God, you don't look anything like your pictures. Just be real. And so here's a couple of tips. Look in your phone for if you have any photos of yourself. So if you have some close-ups or if you have some stored somewhere that people have taken of you, what you really need are maybe two good close-ups, a few casual, you wanna have full body shots as well as close-ups because no matter what your body looks like, you don't wanna have surprises. This is truth in advertising. There are people who love every body type and every face and just present who you are and, and rock what you got. Some of the best photos are where you're doing something you love, like the woman playing guitar. One of the photos that I have on my online profile that gets the most, the most likes by men is a photo that I never would have thought of putting online. It's, it's a picture of me with my late father. We were at a wedding of a relative and he was sitting in his walker and holding my hand. And we're just looking at the couple getting married. So you just, just see the two of us and we're not even facing the camera, but there was something so poignant and sweet about it that men immediately get a sense of me being a kind person. So if you have anything where you're showing kindness, care, I don't recommend putting your kids in there you know, if you have pets, definitely put a pet in there. So, you know, just show a little bit about yourself. That's really my best, my best advice and keep it varied. 
I recommend photo shoots when it's not the pandemic and people are starting to do them again. If you can find somebody who will make you feel comfortable and that's the hardest part about taking photos. So it's really about somebody who will help you relax. The other thing is that you can get friends to take your picture. You can take selfies, just hold your camera high so it's not taken under you. And we'll talk more about that when we talk about virtual dating. Don't post a profile of you wearing a mask. I see so many of those. It's like, why do I want to see half of your face covered? Okay, I get it, you're wearing a mask. So I have a photo, I bought these really cute masks that say love on them and they have hearts. One has hearts, one says love. I didn't post it on, on my profile, but that's the kind of thing where it's, it's fun and it has to do with dating. So if you wanted to put one of your photos with a fun, crazy mask, that's okay. I also, if you have had your vaccine, I took a really sexy vaccine photo without trying. I had, I had to pull my arm, my, my shirt down to get the vaccine. So they did it over my shoulder like that. And I had the little Band-Aid on and I just kind of took a picture of my shirt sleeve down and it looks really sexy. So I, so I posted it on one of my online dating sites and I wrote a caption that says, vaccinated is the new sexy. And the other, the other tip is that when you update your photos, you will appear higher up on a man's search. Anytime you make any change, you're gonna show up higher up on searches. So it's good for many, many reasons. Let's talk about searching, sifting, and sorting. First of all, there is no magic dating site. There is no magic dating app. They all work. You have to find the one that works for you. And when I work for clients, I usually have them subscribe to match.com because it has a huge database. And I'm not a big fan of, of taking really small niche kinds of going onto these small niche sites. They, they're limiting. You can go through the whole database too quickly. So again, they work for people and I'm not saying not to do it, but when I work with a client, I like to, I like to use match. And it can be overwhelming to search and sort and sift. Uh, what do I consider niche? There are sites for gluten-free, for vegans, for pet owners, for people who have a Mac. There's sites for everything. Uh, farmers, farmers have sites. So again, if you're only looking for that, like if gluten-free is the most important thing to you, then go on a gluten-free site because you're gonna have to sift and sort too much on the other sites. But if that's not a deal breaker, then go on big sites. There's also OkCupid, there's some free sites, but I like the paid site as a, as a staple because you often have people who are a little bit more serious and will, you know, my clients have found love online through Match uh, mostly. Here's how to search, sort, sift and sort. When I work with a client, we actually go on Zoom, I log into their account, I set it up for them. I walk them through every part of the process. And when we're on a session, I search for them with them and I message for them with their words. You know, we kind of tweak it together, but I'm holding their hand throughout the process until they feel comfortable doing it themselves. And we, you know, and I start to see, I look into their message inbox and I see where, where they can improve and where they should be deleting people and all that stuff. So, you know, if you don't have a dating coach in your back pocket, I'm going to share some of the things that I can help you with now. Again, we talked about opening up your geographic preferences. I would say open it to a hundred miles if you're comfortable with that. Just don't make it really narrow. Widen your age range by several years in either direction. Often people will miss somebody by a year or an inch in height, you know? So if you open up those preferences, you'll have more of a, of a chance of meeting. There's another great story of a woman who was searching for a man, and this happens a lot. She had a wider range of age and location than he did. And they ended up getting married, but he would have missed her by an inch and I think like five miles. So she was able to find him. And I've had that happen to me too, where I've reached out to men who were looking for women who were closer to them and closer in age to them. 
he was much younger than I was, but I liked his profile. So I wrote to him and he said, well, I wish you lived closer, but you seem great. Let's talk. And then we ended up dating. Have the confidence to ignore some of the things that don't matter so much in a man's profile when you're writing to him. You know, focus again, less on his looks and more on his personality. And remember that somebody with a great resume doesn't mean he has great relationship skills. So we don't really know people until we get to know them. And I like to say a profile is not a person. Somebody can have an amazing profile and be a dud. And somebody can have a, a terrible pro profile and be incredible. So be prepared to be surprised and have an open mind. And then we're going to talk a little bit about dating apps. I like Bumble, Tinder, and Hinge. And again, it's, it's very personal. None of these sites are hookup sites unless you let them be. So there are always going to be people who are going to be interested in things that you're not. Just ignore them, move on, and find the people that you want to spend your energy on. When you're on a, a dating app, and in the course, I gave a lot of great tips for how to write your little, very short profile. Just talk a little bit about you, a little bit about him. You can use some emojis to, to punch it up. You can make a list of your top five things that make you happy and ask him what his top five are. You keep it really narrow, but a little bit about a lot of things. When you're swiping on a swipe on, a, on an app, I recommend that you swipe and then go back and read if you match. Just swipe on guys that whose pictures you like, because if you spend so much time analyzing every profile, it's going to take forever. And go back, see if there's any red flags, see if maybe he's married and he's just looking to have fun and it's not what you're looking for. So unmatch, keep going. And if he seems okay, get to know him through a few texts, get on the phone and then go to a virtual date. So remember, a profile is not a person. Try to be open and not judge until you know somebody. Let's talk about virtual dates. They are here to stay. Treat your video dates as real dates. They are they're gonna be your first exposure to the person in real time when they can see you. So make sure you have good lighting. And, I, and most of you have been on Zoom for the last year, so you know how to be on you know, on Zoom, but there's FaceTime, there's Zoom, so make sure your Wi-Fi or data connection is really great. Make sure you have a light that comes from behind the computer or device, because a lot of people have backlighting, which totally puts you in the dark. You want to make sure that you have the camera up, like I said before. Camera up is always better, especially as we age. And I know all of you are young, but as we age, our, um, we don't want people to look under here. And I've had video dates with guys who were holding the camera from below. And it's like, oh God, I don't wanna see your jowls jiggling while I'm talking to you for the first time. It's just not attractive. A lot of people are buying ring lights to use with, um, so those are those big rings and you can get them pretty inexpensively now. And you can also get little clip-ons for your phone, which helps to light you up. You can also, if you have glasses, you can put a little cloth over the ring light to prevent the glare. Dress like you would for a date. So one thing I realized early on is that sometimes when I was doing virtual dating, I would get up. Somebody would say, oh, do you have something? I don't know, we would talk about something. And I would get up. And if you're not, if you're dressed from the waist up and the bottom is like pajama pants, it's not a good look. So you want to make sure you're fully dressed. You can also discuss what you're going to be wearing with the man. So I, I do that on regular dates too. I say, what, what will you be wearing so I know how to dress? You know, you can casually ask these questions so you don't show up in, you know, a fancy outfit and he's wearing a flannel shirt. You just kind of want to match each other. And I think it's nice to, to know what the dress code is. <laughs> and uh, makeup, put a little makeup on, look directly into the camera. A lot of devices have the camera off to the side. And so you never look like you're making eye contact with the person. So if you're looking maybe at an iPad and it's sideways and the camera's over here, 
just make sure you're looking into the camera. And, and you might wanna do a test with a friend. What do you do on a virtual date? You make it fun. The first connection should always be fun and learn something about them. So with pandemic, we have, we have access to so many virtual things that we can do. I love virtual games. There's the ability to play games like Would You Rather. That was one of my favorite games to play on a virtual date. And if you're familiar with the card game, it's Would You Rather eat an ice cream cone while it's melting or a hot dog that's not cooked. I don't know. Like you, you, you have these crazy things and they have, they have some that are not PG, the games, but I think it's a fun way to really understand somebody's values. Like what are they choosing? It's, it's a fun way to not have an interview, but get to know somebody. You can also take a virtual tour of a museum together. And I love museum dates because again, you get to know someone through the objects and you're not having this interrogation. Those are just some of the ideas in the course I taught. I had a hundred questions um, that I shared over a hundred questions and uh, all kinds of fun lists of games, but just don't have that much time together. So I'm going to go into how do we make deeper connections when we're on the phone and we're on video? So like I said before, keep that first call short. It's very easy to get caught up in a conversation. You just wanna see if there's enough connection to either get on a video chat or go do a COVID safe date. The first, either the video chat or the, um, the coffee drink date is, I would say again, limit that to no more than an hour and a half. You wanna leave each other wanting more, even if you both like each other. I mean, people do like these eight hour dates if you feel a connection. And I don't know about you, but I get exhausted. What do you say on that first call to a, a relative stranger? First thing is look in his profile. If he has anything interesting, talk about that. Find out what he does for a living and don't forget the because. Ask him, what do you like about your job? What makes you want to get up in the morning and go to work? And prepare your answers to any questions you ask him. What do you love about your work and why? What are you passionate about and why? What's important to you and why? Do you have any plans? Do you have any, you know, think about what you do for fun. Think about what you were like as a child. Think about, you know, one of the most important things to find out is, does he have friends from a long time ago? Like, does he nurture his friendships? So you can ask him, when's the last time you talked to a friend? What do you miss most about the pandemic? What big adjustments have you made? These are all questions that can show you, is he a person with a growth mindset or a fixed mindset? Does he, is he innovative? Is he, um, does he make the most of challenges or does he get shut down? And, you know, and you can see that pretty quickly. And if that's important to you, you're going to want to know, how do you deal with crisis? How do you deal with challenge? You're talking to him. You want to see, is there enough of a connection to keep going? And I am offering one of the free gifts that I have, and you'll see it at the end, is I put together a guide with 10 excellent questions to ask to spark great conversations. And you'll be getting the link to that in just a few minutes. Not only do I share, and I'll tell you more about that at, at the end. I'm just gonna review quickly uh, some of the most important safety tips. Pay attention to your gut. If a person that you're meeting online is inconsistent with the stories he tells, or his language is too flowery, or he's texting way too much, or he's too sexual before you've even met, follow your instinct and end things right away. And if it's really, if he's violating any, anything really badly, report him to the site. Another thing I recommend is to use a Google Voice number instead of your own number. Google Voice, if you live in America, um, it's only, I think it's only available in the United States, but it is a number that cannot be traced. And again, you can just Google Google Voice if you don't have the number yet. And you get a free number where you can, um, it also has an app that you can have on your phone. 
So you can make calls from there. You can receive calls. There are voicemails. The voicemails are transcribed. And you don't have to give out your real number until you are comfortable and know the person well. And you can also block anyone who comes across as sketchy or creepy right away. And if you want, you can then set, share your cell number when you're ready and you feel more comfortable. It takes time to build trust. And so take your time. The next thing is if you're meeting in person, drive yourself or take public transportation. Don't let a man ever pick you up at home. I, I, this seems silly to have to say, but I have had clients who have said, yeah, I met him for the first time and he, he came to my house and then we took a walk in the woods together. And I'm like, no, do not ever do that again. And, you know, she's just a very trusting person. She hadn't even thought that there could be something bad. So drive yourself, lower the risk of putting yourself in an uncomfortable or dangerous position. Meet in a public place. That's pretty um, self-explanatory. And there's, there's this really cool thing if you visit a bar or a restaurant to let a bartender or waitress know if things are not going right. There is a code that some bars understand. Um, I don't know if it's true for all bars, but it's a secret code and it's ask for an angel shot. It's code for something is not right and you need help. So an angel shot. And um, that's a good tip to know. I've never had to use it, but again, you're in public, you're not putting yourself in great danger. Don't give out too much per personal information. And again, that's why I have you do the, um, the Google voice number. So protect your private information so he can't figure out where you live. That means don't put your last name, like if you're wearing a name tag in a photo or your geotagged photos, you know, like a lot of people don't realize they're they're standing in front of something that identifies something important or the name of your business or, you know, all kinds of things that people don't even think about. But the name tag and the name of the company, a lot of people miss that when they, when they take photos that they post online. Stay sober. A lot of people drink too much when they're dating and then you can't think straight. And I've seen people go home with somebody when they were not of sound mind. So Make good decisions and keep it to one drink on a, you know, I don't drink. So I, it's never been a problem for me, but I've seen people do it. COVID safe boundaries. We all have our COVID restrictions. Everybody is different. And there are people who are going to say to you, I don't wear a mask or why should I wear a mask? And there are other people who are going to say, I won't meet you unless you're wearing a mask. So Feel, I, I really highly recommend that you're really clear about what you feel comfortable with. And if they are not willing to wear a mask or you know, have they been isolating, have they been washing hands? If they're making fun of it, if the, I mean, I've seen it in people's profiles, like you know, it's, it's a conspiracy, it's whatever. If you don't feel that this person is on the same page, then don't meet them. And also I would be really specific. I do not touch or kiss until I feel comfortable, until we both have been COVID tested, until whatever works for you, make sure to enforce it. All right, so um, we're gonna open for Q&A in a minute, but here's a little bit more about the free gift. This is 10 first date questions to spark great conversation and they are not just the questions, but I also included what you will learn from each question when you ask it. It's the values that you'll learn about, and they seem kind of, you know, they're not inquisitive kind of interrogative questions, but they're really cleverly asked so that you will get really great information about somebody. And I also include a few other tips to really help you have success on your first dates. The last thing is that I'm offering a free half hour breakthrough session for the first 15 people who fill out a form at this date at this website, lastfirstdate.com forward slash breakthrough. And this is for people who are really serious about learning more about coaching and want to work through an issue that they have. If they feel stuck, 
if you feel like you've tried everything else, it's not working and you see the value of coaching, especially after we speak tonight, after we've spoken. Um, so you get a half an hour with me and either way, you're gonna get, you're gonna get a, a great half hour, whether you decide to work with me or not. So this is for the first 15. So if you're interested, I suggest you do it tonight when we're done. All right, do we have any questions? So there was one question earlier, Sandy, about um, what is your opinion? To. Yeah, what is your opinion about putting age in the search for yourself and then tell your true age in the first line of your profile? I'm not a huge fan of lying about anything, but it is a common practice. I think if you're honest right away, because it's so common that people put a different, a younger age for search purposes, as long as you come clean right away, but, but just know that you can turn off certain people who's, who will see that as what else will they lie about? What do you think about Zeus or elite singles? They were, I, like I said, they all work for, for different people. I had a client on Zisk. It wasn't a great site for her, but if it works for you, keep doing it. Um, a lot of these sites that promise like Ivy League type of sites, uh, they're, they're just not like the right stuff, I think is one of them. They're just not working for people. And um, so when you say text, are you referring to the apps, text or chat, but not your phone? Yeah, texting on the app or the dating site. I, I would say don't don't go to phone unless you're ready. And then when you do, I would say I prefer to talk rather than text. You've got to be that specific, <clears throat> or people just will just default back to texting, and it is a horrible way to get to know somebody. Horrible. So many misunderstandings. Uh, Tracy, thoughts on a man who's never been married? You've been told it's a red flag. It's not a red flag. Unless, unless the man is a red flag. So I am a big proponent of not judging people until you know them. I have a friend who's close to 60, just got married for the first time. Uh, Helen Fisher, who, who is the, um, she's a, an incredible um, social anthropologist, I don't know, a sociologist. She, um, she created chemistry.com. Um, she, she just got married at 75. So if people felt that way, you know, that's not fair. It's, uh, there are lots of reasons. I have had many clients who have never been married and through our work, they got married for the first time in their late fifties and sixties. I mean, it's so, it's only a red flag if the person has other issues you know, has, has, is, is a commitment phobe, is damaged in other ways. So give people the chance, just like you would want them not to judge you for anything that you have. It's how to choose tagline that is playful, but doesn't attract players. You're always going to attract players. Your job is to not let them in. <laughs> um, do a tagline. I mean, people don't usually use taglines anymore in, in dating sites, but, um, be playful. Maybe there's a funny quote. Maybe there's something that you um, that people know you for. But don't don't ever think that you're not going to attract scammers, players. You just don't engage with them. I'm really concerned about privacy. Any suggestions? So I shared a few. And again, if you just keep your information private until you are ready to share really tune into your gut. The more you date, the more, the more you become attuned to people who are scammers, people who are just looking for a hookup. I mean, I had a guy once who I met him for a smoothie during the day. And the next day he wrote to me and said, uh, are you around or something? Are you available? I don't know what he wrote. It was obviously a pickup line. And so I said, why would you have in mind? Well, I have a little time before I have to go to my next appointment. I was wondering if you want to come over. And I said, um, no, that doesn't work for me. Uh, I said, you know, if you want to get together for lunch or dinner sometime soon, I'd be happy to do that. So we, we made a plan for the next day and he, he met me for lunch and then he just proceeded to try and put his hands everywhere. And I said, okay, this isn't working. 
you know. So, you know, you're not, you're not giving anything away. You have control and you're in control of your life. Are you saying not to use sites for older people? No, I'm not saying you should never use them. Again, every site works. Every site, people find love every day. And um, you just have to use discretion as to, you know, go on a site, see if it works for you. And if it doesn't work for you, go on a bigger site, go on a site that has people of all ages and open up your age preferences, but just try it. Should a woman offer to split uh, the cost of a meal or let the man pay um, as we vaccinate? It's more of an issue because we're actually meeting somebody. So what are your yeah. thoughts on that? My, my thoughts on that is that you can do whatever makes you comfortable, but a lot of women offer to pay and then they're resentful that the man didn't pay. So if that's going to be you, <laughs> if you're going to say, oh, I'll, I'll pay for half. And he says, okay. And then you never want to see him again. Don't offer. I would say what, what I like to say, if that's, if that, if you're really wanting a man to pay the, the way to get him to see if he's going to step up is to say, do you need help with the bill? Now, the reason I word it that way is because most men want to be manly. They want to say, no, I got this. I got it covered. First of all, the first time you're meeting someone, it's going to probably be for coffee or a drink. If they can't afford to take you out for coffee, I would have a problem with that. I also like to say, <laughs> I like to be courted. I mean, you can tell a man, I love when a man treats me. It, it makes me so happy. So you're telling a man what makes you happy. And you know, when I coach a woman, we, we talk about how to talk to men and what makes a man's heart swell is giving him the, the, the menu for your happiness. You know, this is, this mm -hmm. is what I like. I like to be courted. And then when I'm in a relationship, it's much more equal. You know, I will definitely take you to, you know, to, to theater, to treat you to nice dinners. But what, what a lot of people do is they just start giving all that stuff too fast before there's been any relationship developed. And we have to be careful not to overgive. So how what about are what best are best places? places? Yeah. To so meet you said men coffee shops was one. Yeah. So meeting men in real life, you mean not online, not, not, not connecting online. Oh. Um, so yeah. So a coffee shop is actually one. Anytime you're with people, it's a little harder with a mask on because we can't really see people's faces as well. But in the old days, I used to tell people to smile smile and say hello to three men a day and you can still smile people can see your eyes are smiling if you're wearing a mask and i would say that you want to be engaging and be fun say, compliment a man you can be and ask a man for help so like let's say you're in the pharmacy and he's in the same aisle and you think he's cute. So you could say, I, you know, I'm really having trouble figuring out the best body wash. What, which would you recommend? <laughs> and you could do that in the, in the coffee shop. Like, you know, I don't know that muffin looks really good. Have you tried the pumpkin muffin? Which would you recommend? And then you can get into a conversation. So really anywhere. Uh, the other thing I think is great is meetups. And even during the pandemic, meetups have been meeting on online and take a class in something where you know men will be and you will enjoy. So it really has to meet all those markers. When you take a class, let's say improvisation comedy, like that to me was a big stretch. And I took, I, I, I signed up for a class and a guy, because you're, you're playful, you're being, you're being playful and silly and fun. And that's, that's attractive. And a guy asked me out, so do it. <laughs> Go out there and just just get out of your comfort zone because that's that's where all the good stuff happens. Uh, we have another comment. I'd say the overarching issue is that women are open, put in details, men are lazy, and meet serious relationships via match, but now not so much. I, I think it's dangerous to call men lazy um, because all men are not lazy. It's not good to put anybody in a box just like you wouldn't want to be put in a box. And so if you have met serious relationships on match, then it will happen again. I think people have, a lot of people have 
uh, pandemic fatigue. And so, you know, some people are just not even sure how to get started. So I've, I've gotten comfortable just saying, you know, it seems like you're, you're not so excited about dating right now. How do you feel? And people will be honest with you. So somebody else asked about, um, didn't love my comment about asking men for advice. I'm not saying that we are helpless. I'm saying that men will respond really well to saying, what do you think? That's all I'm saying. We do not dumb ourselves down to men and men should not be acting like they're our saviors. But if you don't include men in decisions and you don't ask them ever for their opinion, they don't feel necessary in your life. It's just a human thing. It's not, it's not just a, a helplessness thing. How do you deal with health limitations? Yours or theirs? Okay, this came up in a, in a chat the other day. I think unless you have a health condition that needs to be talked about from the start, I would say, again, you don't know somebody well enough to share that information right away. And people also can't handle all of each other right away. I've seen this so much in online dating that people will say on a first phone call, a lot of men have done this. Um, by the way, I have diabetes. I have this, I have that. I, I have kidney stones. Like I, then I feel like a caretaker. Like I feel like they're looking for somebody to take care of them. That is not, that's going to turn me off right away. So if you, if you share, you know, I have an eating disorder and I had this and I had cancer and don't share any of that up front. I, I, that's my personal opinion. Other people disagree with me, but the more somebody likes someone, the more they'll accept the whole person. So when you're getting to know someone, I highly recommend you connect on the good stuff first and then slowly introduce some of the harder stuff. But if you put it all out there right away, it's just like putting a pile of stuff on somebody and they don't know you well enough to sift and sort through it and say, well, I like her so much, I'm willing to accept the whole package and, and vice versa. So that's, that's how I feel. Then can you share more about write in a way that a man can see himself in your life and in your picture? When you paint a picture of your life, like I shared in the profile that I, that I wrote, you're saying, I like hiking because I go off in the woods and I like walking by the beach. He's going to feel like, oh, I like hiking too. Oh yeah, in the winter, I really, wow, that sounds really great. I could see myself in there. Or you say, um, talk about a vacation that you took that you loved. And maybe it's, you took a trip to Bali. And the reason you loved it is because you got to meet people from different cultures and you love sampling foods and experiences. And you're much more of a, you know, a culture type of traveler than a cruise traveler. So the cruise traveler is gonna say, I'm not interested. I wanna go on a cruise and gamble and smoke. And another guy is going to go, this sounds great. I can see myself in that woman's life, right? <laughs> I mean, there's all types, right? So what's going to work for one person is not going to work for another. But the more you can paint what it would be like. And I always tell women, like, don't paint this romantic scene of something that's going to happen maybe once a year, you know? What's your ideal day going to look like, your day-to-day? -day? you know, sitting on the couch with, you know, watching this show, you know, and if you're into, sci you know, if you're into football, I promise I'll, I'll try to learn how to like it or something. I don't know, but like, you know, you just want to be realistic about what your day-to-day -day life is. You know, maybe you cook dinners every night and that's important to you that you've always had great food on the table. Like, it's surprising to me how, how few people sit down to a good meal. So, you know, that's a part of my life. It's not a part of other people's life. I, I made cheesecake for my son's birthday a few weeks ago and I was telling my students and they were like, you made that? So I'm assuming their mothers don't make cheesecakes. Uh, there's another question, what about politics? Well, with the current, yeah, I, I believe things like politics, religion, if these things are important to you, talk about it, you know, find out where they are. 
we we just ended a political dec uh, decade. It was four years, but it felt like two decades. Um, where it was very controversial and a lot of people put that up on their profile. You know, I so swipe right if you're a Trumper, swipe left, um, not right. Uh, but yeah, I just think that you, you need to be clear about what's important to you. Like if religion, if you're an atheist, you don't want somebody who's highly religious. If they go to church all the time and they talk about God and they're trying to convert you, that's an important conversation to have. So that's how I feel. Used to be no no sex, religion, politics, God, I don't even know what, you know, there are certain things that you definitely don't want to talk about. But I think, again, if it's important to you, don't find out on the fifth date. So Sandy, I, I didn't write this in, but just what, what would a coaching session look like um, for somebody or somebody wanted to engage with you longer term more than just the, you know, the, the 15 minutes that you offered? Um, yeah. So um, I just got a question about what's my website. Yeah. It's lastfirstdate.com. And there's like over a thousand blog posts. And, um, and what if a man doesn't post his photo? If you like what he wrote, then um, yeah, then talk to him. Again, the profile's yeah. not a person. So if he doesn't have a photo and you like, if he wrote a great essay, write to him. And if he doesn't seem great after that, then goodbye. If someone's interested in you, but you're not feeling it, what's the time way to let them know? And then I'll, I'll answer your question, Kimberly. Sure. Um, if someone's interested in you, I'll be direct. Um, you know, I've enjoyed talking to you. But unfortunately, I don't feel that I don't feel the spark I need to continue. I like to use that one. I don't feel the spark I need to continue. Um, and I wish you well. And then move on. So what does a session look like? Um, so I do, I have a single session that people can do if they have like one particular question. And I call that the man plan. And that's a half an hour laser session. And people have come to me with questions like, should I stay or should I go? I'm dating this person. I'm not sure if I should continue. Or um, uh, I don't know how to get unstuck. I have this pattern. You know, and, and in a half an hour, I can analyze and connect the dots and help them understand themselves and why they've ended up in this position and give them the blueprint to move forward. So that's a single session. And that's really just a one-time thing. In, in my coaching, um, I, it's a six month program. So it's, it's 50 minute sessions, three times a month. And in those sessions, we first uncover any patterns that people have been repeating and look at how people maybe didn't speak up enough or maybe they kept choosing the same kind of partner with a different face. So that's often the case, you know, until we really get coaching we tend to choose somebody who's controlling, somebody who's drinking, somebody, you know, he starts out, you didn't know he was an alcoholic, but you ended up in a codependent relationship somehow. Or maybe you were in relationships where your needs weren't met, but you didn't know how to speak up and ask for what you wanted. And so a lot of what I do is teach women how to be more effective communicators, how to set those boundaries early on, how to command respect by being a person who respects herself and how to easily tell if a man is right or wrong for her. And so we, we do a lot of pre, pre work before we get online and, and offline dating support. And I write her profile. I do all the stuff I talked about by, you know, getting online and searching, sifting, sorting. And then when they're in a relationship and some of them enter relationships while we're still working together, then I guide them in the relationship. Um, you know, what to, how to process stuff, how to have conflict, how to, you know, conflict is one of the hardest things we do in, in all of our relationships. And so learning how to fight fair is a huge part of having relationship success. And yeah, it's life-changing. I mean, often we will start with family relationships and friendships because that's the part we need to also clean up, you know, where you're not speaking up there. 
I have a client right now, I'm working with her, with her, her boss who has been unkind to her sometimes and learning to speak up and set limits with her and uh, a good friend who is draining the life out of her. So just like taking your time back, taking your energy back. It's, it's pretty comprehensive. I go very deep and we work through stuff so that you can unlock things that you've never been able to do before. Uh, we have a few more questions. One problem is there's so few men available in the older age brackets. Date younger. I date younger. I, you know, I think it's, I think you open up your preferences. And, and it's not that there are few men. It's important to, again, like if one dating site isn't working for you, go to another one, go to a meetup. You, there's so many people out there. It's, it's a question of meeting the right people. I would also love takeaways. I would love to hear key takeaways. So if anybody wants to share one or two things that you're gonna take away from tonight, um, it really helps to anchor and helps you to actually do something. To thyself be true. I love it. <laughs> and we will share um, the, all of Sandy's contact information, links to her mm -hmm. website, information about her book and other things as well. And those two Great. free resources as well as a follow-up. Thank you. Learning how to connect more from the heart, not the head. Love it. Google Voice. How you're saying that it is possible to meet someone. Yes. <laughs> too many to write here. This was terrific. Um, you guys have been great, a great audience. I really interactive. I really always appreciate that. When I spoke in New York, we had a hundred and something women in the audience. Um, it was really, really wonderful. I feel like cheesecake. <laughs> Oreo cheesecake. That was his request. <laughs> um, you're so welcome. I'm so glad that all of you were here and I hope some of you reach out. I have so many resources free. I also, by the way, have a coaching group that meets monthly and it's it's a much less expensive way to connect with me if, if coaching is out of your budget. So um, if you look on my website, you'll see group coaching is an option to, to press on the homepage. And it's called the Woman of Value Club. And we meet monthly and do an hour masterclass like the one here tonight. And we talk, I go deep on topics that are relevant to women at this stage of life. And a lot of them are not even about dating. Like this month was about overthinking. We've had um, inner critic talks. And I often invite my podcast guests as, as guests for the Woman of Value Club. So you get that extra an extra bonus of having somebody. So this, this coming month in April, we're talking about communication skills in dating. And we are gonna have a guest who is gonna be on my podcast. Her name is Jocelyn Johnson. She created a card game and workbook called Relationship Check-Ins. And this is to preempt big blow-ups because you talk about all the stuff as they come up through a game. and. I just loved her so much that I wanted to bring her to my group. So if anyone's interested in that, it's the Woman of Value Club and you can find that on my website as well. Very good. Well, thank you all for joining us. And Sandy, thanks so much for sharing so many, um, so many great tips and information. And I probably, um, I know a couple of people signed off early, so they're probably already <laughs> filling out that profile <laughs> request. Uh, so. Awesome. Yeah, so thank you all so much um, for our Chicago Gals uh, members. We are uh, reviving our Solo Together group. So I'll share some information about that if you'd like to join us because we want to maybe talk a little bit about what we what we learned and what we heard tonight. And uh, so be sure and check the events page for all of the TTN events that are coming up in Chicago and in your chapters. Um, I know in Chicago we're starting to meet a couple of times together in person 